Hey everyone, I'm Kevin with Victory 4x4. In today's video, we're gonna be installing our roof rack on the top of our 2022 Nissan Frontier. Now, as you get started, you'll want to first make sure that you have everything you're gonna to need to get this assembly and installation complete. So you should have five of these extruded aluminum crossbars, your front and rear fairing, as well as two mirror image side rails and your front and rear mounts. Along with that, you'll have your main hardware pack and some edge lock trim to go on the front edge and back edge of your fairings. Now, as you may have noticed, we already have this rack partially assembled. And for the most in-depth look at how to get assembled to this point, you'll want to refer to the installation document on the product page where you would have purchased your rack. Now, the rack will assemble using primarily quarter 20 button head hardware with washers as well as serrated flange nuts on the inside of the mounts as well as the front and rear fairings. On the crossbars, those are just gonna be a pre-threaded part, so the bolts should thread right in. Now, as you may have already noticed on this one, I do have both the front and rear crossbar currently removed. That's kind of for ease of installation to both access the mounting locations as well as be able to show you guys what we're doing in those locations. So I recommend you do the same thing until this is installed up on the roof. From this point, we can now move into a little bit more of an in-depth look at how to identify as well as install the front and rear mounting brackets. So on the front mount, these are gonna be a two-piece mount. The upper half is side specific, so you'll need to pay attention to the forward facing arrows in those as well as the orientation of the bracket itself. Here we're working on the passenger side, so you can kind of see this vertically slotted tab is gonna mount out to the side rail and toward the front of the bracket, again with the arrow facing forward. The lower side of the bracket is not side specific, so it doesn't matter which one of these you grab, it's just gonna be very critical that you get it in the correct orientation when bolting it to the top half. So the square cutouts are gonna to mount to the bottom of the bracket using the innermost set of holes once you have this installed. And to know that you have it in the correct orientation, the bottom mounting slots on this bracket should line up with the slots here when everything is in place correctly. So you can start by taking just the top half of the bracket and installing it to the inside of the side rail using the quarter 20 button head bolts and serrated flange nuts. With that in place, you can grab the lower half of the bracket, and from the bottom side, you'll be installing these flathead carriage style bolts into the square cutouts. And then you can take this assembly, place it into the slots on that upper bracket, and thread the flange nylock nuts into place. Now for the quarter 20 bolts here on the outside of the side rail, you can grab a 5 30 seconds hex and just lightly tighten those into place for now. We'll do some final adjustments with those later on. You can then grab a half inch socket to tighten the nuts here for the lower half of the bracket. Now with these, you wanna tighten them up enough that they're holding the bolts securely into the bracket but not so much that you can't still use the slotted adjustment here because we will want that once we have the rack installed up on the roof. When you have these tight enough, the square drive on those carriage style bolts should not drop out of the hole and be able to rotate freely anymore. You can then repeat that process to get your driver's side mount installed, and then we can move on to that rear mount. The rear mounting brackets are not side specific, so you can grab either one here, and we'll install them to the side rail using the vertically slotted holes in the bracket itself and these two round holes on the side rail. Again here, we're working on the passenger side, just as a reference, and this will install in a similar fashion to the front mount using quarter 20 button head bolts from the outside in, with those nuts on the inside. Then in a similar fashion to the front mount, I'll take my 5 30 seconds hex and lightly tighten this into place before doing the same thing on the driver's side. At this point, your rack should look similar to what I have here. 
and you're now ready to grab a friend to help you set this up on the roof of the vehicle. As you're placing the rack up here on the roof of the vehicle, you're looking to get each mount to sit down in this factory rain or drip channel along the edge of the roof here. You're also gonna be looking to center the rack side to side in this location, and then we'll also measure front to rear to place this permanently. So for that measurement, you can take your tape measure and you're gonna measure from the front edge of this black factory drip rail trim forward to the center of the rearmost mounting hole on this rear bracket. And the measurement you're looking for there is eight and three quarter inches. So ours needs to come forward about an eighth right here. And just as a second measurement reference, that should be about eight and three eighths to the back edge of the bracket itself. Once you're happy with that and you're confident that you have this in the correct location, Go ahead and take a minute, go all the way around to all four mounts, make sure the entire rack and mount assembly looks centered on the vehicle, centered in that rain channel, as well as even front to rear on both sides. Once you have double and even triple checked your measurements so you know this thing is 100% accurately placed, you can kind of press down to hold it in this location and then take a marker or even a center punch at this time and mark out each of these mounting hole locations. As you come to the front mounts, it's really just repeating the same process as on the rear. You just wanna make sure that the rack did not move from front to rear as you came up here. And then you're likely not gonna be able to get a Sharpie marker down through these top cutouts in that top half of the bracket. So what works really well is just a sharp prick point punch like I have here to reach all the way down through there and put a centered mark into that drip channel. With all eight hole locations marked out for both sides, you can then remove the rack from the roof so that we can have a little bit better access and clearance here for drilling and Rivna installation. So as you get set up to drill, you'll wanna first center punch all of your hole locations. At this point, you'll notice that there is some kind of foam-like sealant along this edge that's then painted over at the factory. You will want to make sure you get all the way down through that and get a good center punch mark on the actual sheet metal. Then for the drilling, we provide you with a bit to finish off at the correct hole size here for the Rivna installation. However, you're gonna wanna start with a few smaller bits and kind of step your way up and then finish out the holes with that size. We're gonna start off with an eighth inch drill bit. You'll also notice on here, I have a drill stop. We're gonna highly recommend that you purchase some of these if you don't have them already, just to prevent over drilling in this location and damaging anything underneath there. Now we did have the headliner down underneath here during our R&D process to identify appropriate hole locations for this drilling. But again, if you go too far, the headliner's still under there, you could still cause yourself some problems. So I have this drill stop set up with about a half inch of stick out here. That's a pretty good starting point to get through this sealant as well as the sheet metal, and we can always adjust that just a little bit if needed. Then it's just a matter of getting that set up in the drill and slowly drilling out all eight of these mounting holes. After we have our eighth inch hole drilled, it's really just a matter of stepping up through multiple drill bit sizes a little bit at a time to finish out this hole. However, you now have an opening here that can introduce these metal shavings and any debris, allowing those in on top of the headliner around the airbags and things like that, which we don't want. So we're now gonna recommend that you set yourself up with a vacuum as well, so that you can run the vacuum and suck all of that out while you're drilling the holes. After you have the holes opened up to the correct size to accept the rivnuts, nuts, you're still gonna have to deal with getting some of this sealant out of the way so that they can see all the way down against the roof sheet metal. For that, we have a countersink bit here that's gonna remove that material as well as not allow us to over drill and damage anything underneath once again. 
You could do this, a similar thing with a half inch drill bit and then you'll just have to come in much like we will as well with a flat screwdriver and kind of pick out that final remaining sealant so that we have a nice clean mounting surface there. You'll again want to get your vacuum in here to clean up any of these shavings and then work towards getting down to that bare sheet metal. So you'll know that you have these holes cleaned out enough as well as to an appropriate size when you can one, take your Rivnut installation tool with a nut on the end. This is gonna be a tool we provide. You will have to assemble it. So it's gonna be a star washer, the high nut you see here, another single washer on top, and a long M6 hex bolt. With everything assembled in that order, you can thread your first rib nut onto the end and place it down in that hole, making sure that it seats all the way down, nice and flat against the sheet metal. Your secondary check here is gonna to be to take one of the provided aluminum spacers and drop that down in the hole location as well, making sure that it sits nice and flat. That is gonna bring your mount kind of up nice and flush with the top of this sealant when everything's installed. To properly use this tool and get the rib nuts installed, you're gonna need a half inch wrench to hold that high nut here in the center, along with a 10 millimeter socket on a drill or an impact to run the screw itself and compress that against the sheet metal. Before you actually place these down in, we are gonna recommend that you put a little bit of RTV silicone sealant in here just to prevent any water intrusion as well as corrosion in that area over time. With that sealant in place, you can then place the tool with the rivnut installed down in the hole grab that wrench and socket and begin tightening these into place. Now you will have to kind of use your judgment during this step to make sure you're not over tightening them, but also make sure that you're getting them fully seated against that sheet metal so that they're not gonna rotate as you try to tighten hardware into them later on. With ours seemingly tight, we're gonna back this back out. You can then get the tool removed. And kind of check your work here. You can clean up any excess RTV for now so you can get a good look at this as we will add more into this location before we get the spacer and bolt installed. If you do have any concerns at this point as to whether or not you have that fully seated in there, you can always put that socket on a ratchet and kind of check this by hand so you can get a little bit better physical feel for it. Then it's just a matter of repeating that whole process on the remaining seven holes to get all your rib nuts installed. After you've drilled out all of your holes and installed all of your rib nuts, you have a couple different options on how to proceed. So we have the rack back up here on the roof. You could do the same. And then we've taken out this rear mount. The reason we're doing it this way is mostly to be able to show you without having to worry so much about time with our RTV drying up and things like that, how these spacers the mount and then the mounting hardware go into place. Once you've seen this step, you could potentially leave all four mounts up here on the rack. You could then complete this step with the spacers, the RTV at all four mounting locations and then place the entire rack assembly up on top of those spacers. As long as you can do that cleanly without 
smearing your RTV around or anything along those lines. You'll also just want to make sure that you can complete that in a timely manner before that RTV begins to dry up. Once you've determined how you want to achieve this, you can move forward with some RTV and your aluminum spacers. For each of these, you're going to want to kind of fill the hole, or at least the outside perimeter of the hole, with RTV. And then you'll take the spacer itself, drop it down into the hole and kind of press it down in, creating a nice seal around that spacer. With the spacers down in the hole, you'll then want to add an additional bead around the top edge of that, that your bracket can then press down and seal against once installed. You're then ready to install your mount, so you'll now need the M6 button head bolts with oversized washers. You can then place the mount carefully down on top of your silicone spacers. Just let that kind of rest down using the weight of the mount. And then add an additional final bead of RTV around the top side of this hole for the spacer and bolt to seal to. Then go ahead and carefully install that bolt and begin threading in to those rib nut inserts. Then before your silicone dries, you can reinstall the quarter inch hardware holding the mount to the side rail. Then using a four millimeter hex, you can tighten the mount to the roof. And at this point, you can again, just lightly, using a 5 30 seconds hex, snug the outside hardware to the side rail. Once you've completed this process on both rear mounts, that's gonna accurately locate the rack from front to rear. You can then go to the front mounts and get them installed. On the front bracket, you will likely have to separate the two halves just temporarily. That's to be able to get the mounting hardware adequately installed, as well as get that properly sealed. You can then reassemble them how you already had them before or kind of how you see here and reaching down through the top, tighten that up with a four millimeter hex. You'll then grab your 5 30 seconds hex and tighten the outside mounting bracket to the side rail temporarily. That's just to pull this top half of the bracket kind of out square to the side rail itself. And then you can take your half inch socket and tighten your carriage style bolts here for the final time. The only thing you wanna pay attention to here as you're getting these tightened up is the side to side adjustment of the front of this rack. So just make sure that the gap, if there is any between the two bracket halves here is the same on the driver and passenger side. After you have all four mounts tightened in place, you can then reinstall those front and rear crossbars that we had previously removed and move on to side rail height adjustment. For this step, you'll want to make sure that the side mounting hardware between the fairing and the bracket is just a little bit loose so that you have the vertical adjustment available to you here. And then it's really just a matter of lining these side rails up to the roof line, kind of just making sure that they're parallel all the way along here and checking clearance in a couple locations. One of those will be the sunroof or moonroof if your truck is equipped with one of those to the upper crossbars here, specifically the second and maybe third one, depending on the locations you have these in. 
And that's really only gonna be a factor in the vent feature, and you'll wanna check that both empty and loaded depending on what you're putting on your rack. The only other location that may even come close to contacting will be kind of the shark fin antenna at the center of the back of the roof to that rear crossbar, so just pay attention to that one as well. From there, like we said, just line it up parallel and snug these up on both sides of the vehicle. When adjusting the fairings, you want to use the slotted mounting holes on the side to press this down tight to the roof so that you don't get any vibration or wind noise along the front edge here. Before you actually tighten it in place, however, we're gonna recommend installing 3M paint protection film along the front edge, anywhere that this edge lock trim contacts a painted surface. To do that, we recommend just pushing the fairing all the way down tight to what will be pretty much its final location. And then you can mark out using some masking tape about an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch in front of that edge lock trim. And you'll use that as a guide for where to lay that paint protection film. With your tape line marked out, you can then either remove the two front bolts and flip this up out of the way or completely remove it. That's entirely up to you. You'll then want to clean this entire surface anywhere that you're gonna be laying that film with some sort of residue free cleaner. So I just have an alcohol prep pad here. Rubbing alcohol on a clean microfiber works just as well. From here, this film pretty much goes on like any vinyl graphic or sticker. You'll just start using your mark at one end and follow along your guideline, pressing it down along the way. I'm just using a vinyl applicator card here. You could probably get by with some sort of credit card if that's all you have available. With that film in place, you can get your tape out of the way, flip the front fairing back into position and reinstall the side mounting hardware. You can then press the fairing down tight to the roof and tighten this hardware. You can repeat that same process here on the rear fairing with just a couple shorter pieces of paint film out here on the ends where you would have installed your edge lock trim. You can then repeat that process on the rear fairing to complete your installation. Now if you guys have any questions at all about this installation or anything else we offer here at Victory 4x4, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can always email us at info at victory4x4.com or call us at 269-459-8447.